Today I'm going to talk about the top three mistakes I see when people are taking breakfast and why it might be contributing to you not being able to lose weight. And it's coming right up. Breakfast mistake number one, too soon. When you're sleeping, you're not eating. So that's the fasting period. And that's where the word breakfast comes in. It's the meal that breaks your fast. If you ate dinner at around 6 o'clock uh, p.m. and didn't eat breakfast until 8 o'clock p.m., that's about a 14-hour period of fasting. When you're not eating, your body still needs energy. So it needs to take some of the stored energy, which is calories, out from where you stored it from, which is sugar or body fat. So when you're fasting, you're using body fat. Once you start eating, your body now has a source of calories or energy and is therefore able to use that for energy and actually store some away. When you're eating, you're storing calories. When you're not eating or fasting, you're using those calories. So if you simply extend the period of time of fasting, then you can burn more body fat. So don't you have to eat breakfast as soon as you get up? Well, no, because your body has already fueled you up for the day. This is part of the normal circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is that hormones in our body go up and down depending on the time of the day. And one of the things that we've noticed is that around four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, just before you get up, most people have a surge of certain hormones, growth hormone, cortisol, uh, sympathetic tone, nor adrenaline. These are the same as the counter-regulatory hormones that you see during fasting. The point of these is to take energy that's stored away, such as body fat, and take that energy and push it out into the bloodstream so that you are fueled up for the day. So as soon as you wake up, you actually don't feel very hungry because of the effects of all these counter-regulatory hormones. Your body's saying, hey, I have lots of energy. I don't need to eat. When you look at the circadian rhythm for hunger, most people on average are lowest at around 8 a.m., which is also the time of the day when you've eaten the furthest away. So hunger is not simply a state of how long you haven't eaten. It's, it reflects the state of the hormones and the hormones are telling you, you have enough energy to get going. So don't break your fast the minute you get up because you're going to, to stop the body from using stored calories or body fat. If you're not hungry, why not let your body get moving first? Do something with the energy that the body is already pushing out into the bloodstream. There's no reason that you have to break it immediately, and especially because most people aren't even that hungry at breakfast time. So make sure you don't break your fast too soon. Eating breakfast is okay, but you can do it at 7 a.m. if you want, but you could do it at 9 a.m. You could do it at noon. It doesn't matter to your body. Your body is going to figure it out. Breakfast mistake number two, too much sugar. When you look at typical foods that we think of as breakfast foods, they're loaded with sugar. So sugary cereals are a classic. And of course they taste good, there's so much sugar in them. Sometimes they're 50% sugar. But it's more than just the sugary kid cereals, but things such as muffins are often full of sugar. You have yogurt with the fruit on the bottom, which often has a lot of sugar. The jams and the jellies that people put on uh, bread, for example, again, full of sugar. One of the reasons that people tend to make it so sugary is that people had said for a long time that they wanted to eat a low fat diet. And when you cut down the fat, you have to add other things to it. And one of the things that wound up adding was the sugar. You don't put sugar on eggs, for example. You don't sh put sugar on your sausages, for example, but you will do that on your 
oatmeal, for example, or your cereal or other things like that. And the sugar is very, very dangerous uh, to weight gain. And it's more than simply the amount of carbohydrates. It's in the, the way that the body metabolizes the fructose. Table sugar is a combination of glucose and fructose. Glucose is the same sugar you get with carbohydrates, such as rice and potatoes, as opposed to the fructose, which is seen in sugar and high fructose corn syrup. That fructose can only be metabolized by the liver, and by doing that, it can contribute to fatty liver disease and also to hyperinsulinemia, which can cause a lot of weight gain in addition to the insulin resistance. So the sugar is much worse for you than just the regular uh, carbohydrates. And that's one of the reasons that breakfast is especially bad because a lot of these things are just dessert in disguise. What's the difference between a muffin and a cupcake? What's the difference between a pastry such as a Danish and something like a strudel that you might eat for dessert? Now we all know that desserts are not particularly slimming, but you transform that into a breakfast food and all of a sudden people think it's good for you. Some of the breakfast bars are loaded with sugar and that's what you really have to be careful of. So too much sugar, you really have to be careful of that. And breakfast mistake number three, too many processed and refined carbohydrates. One of the reasons that a lot of breakfast foods are refined carbohydrates is that it's convenient. You don't have to refrigerate it. Often you don't have to cook it very much. Sometimes you just have to toast it or pour the cereal out of a bag. It's because if you want to eat before you go to school or go to work, you want something that's very convenient for you. So you can't have something like a piece of steak, which is going to be difficult to uh, cook and clean up and eat and so on. Uh, instead, it's a lot easier to toast a, a, a slice of white bread and put some jam on it. And that's the reason that most breakfast foods we think of today are actually highly refined carbohydrates. They're cheap, they're easy, they're convenient, they don't go bad, you don't have to refrigerate them. So many reasons why they're perfect for convenience, but unfortunately not very good for your waistline. Those highly refined carbohydrates are going to spike up your glucose, which is going to spike up your insulin. And then because you're the, the high insulin just takes all that energy and sucks it into storage, there's no energy left for you. So you eat two slices of white bread and jam in the morning, by 10.30 you're ravenous and looking for a low fat muffin. Don't fall into the trap. Yes, it's easy. No, it's not good for you. So really, if you think about what works, you just have to think about traditional breakfast foods that we used to eat long ago. Eggs, for example, great. Bacon, meats like uh, sausages, uh, steak and eggs is classic, slow cooked oats, not the instant ones that we have, which are highly sugar, but the old oats. Yes, they're carbohydrates, but there's a lot of fiber in them. The glycemic index isn't that low. It's not that highly refined. So those traditional, traditional breakfast foods are okay. And if it's too difficult because you don't have time to eat breakfast, you don't have to put something in your mouth immediately. You can break your fast any time. So don't worry about it. It's okay to skip that immediate eating on waking up and let your body just continue to use up some of the energy. And those are the three biggest breakfast mistakes that I see. Too soon, too much sugar, and too much refined carbohydrates. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you learned something. If you did, maybe share it with a friend. I'll see you next week.